Hello there and welcome. Mark Castillo here. Welcome to Mark Castillo's Freedom Breakthrough YouTube channel. This video is designed for network marketers and entrepreneurs to help revamp your mindset and to learn marketing tactics that can help you to start generating leads, thus potentially leading to an increase in sales. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a beat on the latest up-to-date information. In today's video, I want to share with you how to raise capital for business. If you take the time to listen with intent and understand what I'm about to share with you, you'll discover nine different ways you can absolutely do so right now. So earlier today, I got a question that came in from Caitlin, and what she asked me was, could you explain how to raise capital for business? I'd like to know what ways it can be done right now, thanks. So when you're starting an online business, or I should say pretty much any business in general, you've gotta understand that it doesn't come for free. If it didn't cost anything to start a business, I think everybody would be doing it already, right? But the truth of the matter is, you're gonna to have to invest some kind of capital into getting your online business off the ground and running. Think of it like a franchise business. You're not handed a franchise business for free. You gotta invest capital into it, whether that be with McDonald's or with Starbucks, with Subway. You know, any kind of franchise business, you've gotta be able to invest capital into it. And something that I learned from a live event that I attended last October is one of the biggest problems that people have when they get started in the online marketing industry is creating capital. See, you can see about building an online business for free, but that can only serve you so much and you need to also be able to invest into it as well. Because like I said earlier, it doesn't come for free. So if you're watching this right now, what I want you to do is I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen and write these nine ways that you can raise capital in for your business right now. Take a moment, get a grab a pen and a paper so you can write this down. Got a pen and paper? Excellent. So the first thing that you can do to raise capital for business is sell your possessions on eBay. Now, this seems like a no-brainer for most people, and I actually used to do this way back when I got my first job and I wanted to explore what it'd be like to make money online. I made some pretty good money doing you know, business on eBay, selling my possessions, and you know, even buying some stuff and flipping it. I made some pretty good money with that. But the thing about selling on eBay, and I don't really hear this talked about a lot, the thing with selling on eBay, what I've noticed, is they have these hidden fees, hidden seller costs, that when you sell an item, eBay will charge you a fee for just selling that item and for listing it. And if you're not aware of that, and you sell a bunch of items through eBay, what will happen is those seller fees will accumulate over time, and you could be looking at a pretty costly uh, seller fees expenses. So just be careful about that if you choose to sell on eBay. Be aware that for every item you sell, eBay's gonna charge you a certain percentage and it's gonna get added to your seller fees and the more that you sell and the higher dollar amount that you sell, eBay's gonna add it, that on to your seller fees. So the first thing is sell your possessions on eBay and the second way that you can raise capital for your business right now is you can do a garage sale now this seems like old-fashioned because now that we have things like eBay Amazon Facebook marketplace Instagram Mercari we have all these other different ways of selling our possessions but if you want to go the old-school way garage sale is another way that you can do to start funding capital for your business. But the thing is, with garage sales, I mean, they can work. 
I mean, personally, I've never done a garage sale before myself, but I still see some people like on the weekends do garage sales and they still work. I don't know how much money they make, but I assume that it works out for them. So a second way that you can raise capital for your business is doing garage sales. Now, the third thing that you want to consider to raise capital for your business is getting a second job. Or, or you can go full time in your current job. Now think about that. I understand that you might not like your job right now. You probably hate it so much, which is why you have this ambition to start your own business in the first place because you don't want to work a nine to five grind for the rest of your life. I get that. But to really fund your dreams, to really fund your business, you've got to be smart about it. If you can go full time in your current job and make more than enough money to invest back into your business, then I highly recommend that you do that. Or if there's no way that you can go full time in your current job or you're not getting enough hours and there's no way to get more hours, you may need to consider getting a second job just so that you can get things running. It may seem like the unpopular thing to say to get the second job, and you probably won't like doing it, but you gotta look at the big picture here. Yes, it's gonna be challenging to work two jobs, but at the same time, there's a goal in mind. You're not just working two jobs just to merely survive. You have a goal in mind. You're gonna use some of that money that you make in your jobs to invest into your business. So I want you to make that mindset shift and think that it's for your business, it's for your dreams, so that you can set yourself free. And then the fourth thing that you can do to raise capital for your business is a credit card. Now, these next few things that I'm gonna mention here, they all have to do with borrowing money, basically. And from my own personal experience, if you're gonna borrow, like let's say more than $10,000, I recommend that you really take a moment and ask yourself before you decide to take out that much money, you gotta ask yourself, is this worth doing? Like what kind of value will I be getting by borrowing this amount of money to invest into whatever business of my choosing? Will it be worth it? Of course, the answer is the answer is probably most likely you're not going to know, but really take the time to really think about it. And whatever business opportunity that you're looking at, you've got to ask yourself, is this going to be valuable to me? Is this going to help further and advance my skill sets and my business? Because if it's not, then you may want to reconsider. Because the thing about borrowing credit borrowing a credit card if you more than max out, it can be scary to fall behind on those payments. And it's even worser when you take out a significant amount of loans and you can't make the monthly payments on those loans and then you start to fall behind on it. It can be scary to do that. But like I said, you just got to think about is it going to be worth investing that much money into whatever business opportunity that you're looking at. Because the reason why you want to invest that much money into whatever business opportunity that you're looking at, you want to make sure that you see the value that you're going to be getting by investing into it. Because otherwise, if you're just blindly investing into something without doing your research and really taking an honest look at it, then chances are you're gonna end up putting yourself in a financial struggle that way. So a credit card is another way that you can raise capital for your business right now. There's also social lending clubs, Lending Club, uh, Prosper. I personally have no experience with how those lending sites work, but if you wanted to see 
if you could borrow loans through there, then by all means, go ahead and take a look at it for yourself. But with borrowing a loan, with borrowing a credit card, it's all gonna depend on a number of factors with how much money that you're making, your current job, and also your credit score, which is the big thing, the big factor as to whether or not they accept uh, your request or they decline you. So there's social lending clubs, then there's also a bank and there's also bank loans and then a home and equity, a home equity loan. Like I said, I have no clue uh, what those things are. I mean, if you want to go the bank loan route or you want to do a home equity loan to fund your business, I recommend that you do your research first before applying for one and decide for yourself to see if it's worth it or not. And so that's what, so those were the next few things. The number eight that you can consider using to fund your business is borrowing money from friends and family. Now this can be a difficult one, especially if your friends and family aren't very supportive of you starting your own business. They're probably most likely gonna be skeptical about it. They're gonna probably doubt you. They're probably gonna think that it's gonna be a waste of time, that it's not practical. So I, I recommend that if you're gonna go and ask your friends and family to borrow money to fund your business, I recommend that you be careful. I'm not sure if careful would be the right term, but just be thoughtful about it. You know, don't just blindly say, oh yeah, I wanna borrow $10,000 from you guys and I'll pay back whenever I can. Maybe what you can do is briefly explain what you're gonna use the money for and how you're gonna invest into it and what's gonna be the value that you're gonna be getting from whatever business opportunity that you're investing in. And as far as repayment goes, I mean, that's between you and whoever's in your circle of friends and whoever's in your family. So that's all gonna depend on uh, between you two. I can't really tell you what to do on that regard. But what I can say here is if you're gonna be borrowing money from friends and family, just be careful because you might get most likely get rejection and a lot of doubt because especially if none of your friends or family have invested into a business before or they're not working from home themselves, they might be very skeptical about it. And number nine that I wanna to touch on here is look into other places to sell your possessions. Now, I just mentioned this earlier on in this video. There's other places besides eBay that you can sell your possessions. A very good one I've been uh, that's been working out for me to really help uh, get myself uh, some capital going is selling my possessions through Facebook Marketplace. Now the great thing about Facebook Marketplace is if you sell an item, they don't charge you anything. But the only drawback I will say about Facebook Marketplace, you just gotta be prepared to possibly face a lot of cheapskates. In other words, a lot of people who might ask you to significantly lower the price of whatever item that you're selling because I've personally had that experience myself. Uh, what I actually sell on the, you know, online or through Facebook Marketplace is uh, toys slash collectibles. And I've been finding on Facebook Marketplace that there's a handful of people out there who really want to like for lack of better term, go cheap. They really want you to significantly lower the price of your item and just be prepared to encounter a lot of that. I mean, chances are if you want to sell your item quick, I, can, I, I recommend that you consider lowering the price of your item however, however way you see fit, but do what's best for you in that regard. And there's other places like uh, Mercari. I've heard a lot about Mercari, which is a selling app that you can use to sell your possessions that way. Personally, I've never used that app, 
So if you wanted to do some research on Mercari, then I recommend that you do that and see if that would be a good place for you to sell your stuff. And there's also Amazon as well, obviously. But the thing that you want to keep in mind here is with, uh, at least with selling on Amazon to my knowledge, they do charge you for seller fees if you sell an item through Amazon. I'm not so sure about Mercari, I believe it's the same way, but just be wary of the hidden costs and the seller fees that you're gonna get charged when you actually go ahead and sell your items that way. So Caitlin, I trust that answers your question and I trust you got value out of this video. Now you know nine different ways to create capital for your business. And I'm not here to tell you exactly how you should raise capital for your business, but at the end of the day, it's all gonna come down to you and what you feel like is the best decision for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, click on the link below. It'll drive you to a page. Put your name and email in there to get the free information on how you can start the journey just like I have. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can get all the latest videos that I will be doing coming your way very soon. With all that said, my name is Marcus Castillo. See you on the next video real soon. Take care and see you around.